Good morning, good morning. Today we're in chapter, finish off chapter 17. Isaac's birth is promised. Uh, that's why I named this one. And uh, finally, we got some positive news. Uh, the Lord is going to appear and uh, get some positive news to uh, Abraham of when Isaac will be born. Up till now, he's been promising it uh, that, that uh, really, really didn't finalize the details, I guess. Uh, so that, uh, that's what we're looking at today. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, oh Lord, thank you so much for the, uh, the information we receive through your word. And continue to help me, Lord, to, to, to be able to decipher it and use it uh, in a way that's honoring to you. And we give you all the praise and thanks. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I find that uh, studying the Bible, I'm getting right. I'm kind of thinking about Sunday's message because I'm going to shift gears a little bit. Uh, I'm going to move into a new, a new way of uh, presenting the rest of Daniel. Uh, it's going to incorporate, incorporate a few other books. So uh, I'm thinking a lot about it, and it's all futuristic. And the, the thing about future is that uh, I try to decipher uh, that God had to try to give us some uh, ability to see into the future so we know when things start to happen, uh, that we can recognize them. But also not to give away too much that uh, the, our adversaries would also have that same information, and that would be Satan. Uh, so uh, remember one, uh, one person I like to follow used to say is that uh, the Lord, as time went on, divulged more and more information as he got closer and closer to the time frame uh, that's going to come to fulfillment, basically keeping Satan in the dark. And it, uh, it, Satan doesn't know either. Uh, he, he doesn't have any preview other than what, uh, his own experience. Uh, and the fact he's very old, uh, he's been around for a long time, so he's probably got some insight that we don't have, but that uh, he doesn't have the knowledge of God. And so I think sometimes God waits right to the last minute just to keep him in the dark more than he's trying to keep us in the dark. But that's not really about what today's lesson is about. So uh, let's uh, get into today's lesson. And we're going to start off in our general area we've been for the last couple of weeks uh, over here in uh, the area around. I'm not going to be pointing much over here. You can probably see the little hand. But we're in this general area. Uh, Abraham is still hanging out here near Hebron. <clears throat> and he's going to get a little visit from uh, from God again. And we're picking up here at verse 15. And God said unto Abraham, As for Sarai thy wife, thou shalt not curse her Sarai, but Sarah shall, be, shall her name be. And Sarah means princess. Uh, that's a pretty, uh, pretty name. <clears throat> And she's also going to be considered to be the mother of all. Uh, uh, but she's going to be the original mother to the entire uh, Jewish nation. <clears throat> you call Eve the same way, more or less, because she was the first woman. But uh, uh, Sarah is going to get the same uh, kind of a... Uh, and you can say that even about... Because uh, after Sarah, uh, we're going to have... Uh, next will be Isaac's wife. Uh, Rebecca, and then uh, and then we get a little more diversified, and we get into uh, <clears throat> uh, Jacob <clears throat> and his wife, wives. Uh, he has four of them, <clears throat> not by choice. Uh, kind of interesting story there when we get to it. But let's continue here. Verse 16. And I will bless her and give thee a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. So a couple of verses on this, uh, talking about the kings and uh, nations that are going to be of her. In Genesis, uh, in 1 Samuel 8.22. And the Lord said to Samuel, Hearken unto thy voice, and make them as king. And Samuel said unto the men of Israel, Go ye every man unto his city. Uh, Samuel is in the lot in this same line. 
the promises of a future day. Uh, and this is going to actually going to happen in, in the next chapter, but we'll just look at a preview here. In chapter 18, verses 10 through 14. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarai thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door, which was behind them. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age, and it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. She had gone through menopause, basically. Therefore Sarah laughed with herself, saying, After I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord, being old also? And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I have surety bear a child, which am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Uh, another promise by God that he will return. And that's jumping ahead to verse 18. That's a great passage uh, to talk about. That'll be probably, uh, that'll be, uh, it might be tomorrow. Yeah, it will be tomorrow. We'll talk about that. So, on to the next verse, in verse 17. Then Abram fell upon his face and laughed, and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old? And shall Sarah, that is ninety years old, bear? Laughed here is more of a, uh, that uh, at this point, Abraham is already knows that God keeps his promises. And so, it's a, it's a laugh of joy, more or less, uh, that uh, finally that day is coming that's going to get his son. Uh because up till now, he's been kind of relying on the fact he did have one son, but that wasn't in God's plan. And I think I found out, I figured out a reason why I would have mentioned that here in a minute. But talk about laughing. Uh, looking at a few verses here in Genesis 18, 12, uh, we just read. Uh, we saw that la Sarah laughed also. And that's a laugh of joy. Also in Genesis 21, 6. And Sarah said, God hath made me to laugh so that all that here will laugh with me. So that would uh, everybody would be uh, happy for her and be joyous over her. <clears throat> and Jesus helps us understand this uh, in John 8, 56 through 58. <clears throat> and this is Jesus speaking. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. And of course, that brought on a lot of uh, contention amongst the Pharisees because basically Jesus just admitted that he knew Abraham. Well, that's the uh, reason I'm bringing this up is that uh, in, in chapter 18, Jesus is actually going to appear to uh, uh, Abraham and actually uh, uh, melt away those epiphanies. And so that uh, he, he's not lying when he said, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day and he saw it and was glad. Then, then said the Jews unto him, thou art not yet 50 years old. Hast thou seen Abraham? And this is what gets Jesus in trouble with the Pharisees. And Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. That I am is an important uh, aspect. Of, well, it actually doesn't, uh, we won't hear about that until Exodus, when Moses is told uh, by, by uh, Jesus. Uh, I'm calling him Jesus because I believe that he was a, a pre-incarnated Jesus. So I'm just kind of using that rather than keep saying, uh, Thipney, which I can't pronounce very well. So basically, he just admitted that he was God, and that's why they're all upset with him. Going on in Romans 4, 19 and 20. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about 100 years old, neither yet the dreadness of Sarah's womb, the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. So that... Uh, Paul there is basically saying the same thing. that uh, The reason he laughed was he was joyous. He was saying, all right, Lord, at my age, you're still going to give me a, a chance to have a child. And so that, that was more of a joyous thing. Can't help but think about another another parent that was very old and was very welcomed uh, when God appeared to them through Gabriel. And that was Elizabeth and Zechariah uh, over in Luke 1.13. I thought I would just share that one here. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, Zachariah, for the prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a, sh a son, and thou shalt call his name John. 
and thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. But he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall be turned to the Lord their God. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. <clears throat> And Zacharias said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am old man, and my wife well stricken in years. And the angel answering unto him said, I am Gabriel, that stand in the presence of God, and am sent to speak unto thee, and to show thee these glad tidings. And behold, thou shalt be dumb, and shalt not be able to speak, until the day that thou shalt, these things shall be performed, because thou believest not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. So that was the other example of somebody quite uh, quite in their uh, older years having a child. And that was John the Baptist, by the way. <clears throat> okay, moving on, Genesis 17, 18. And Abraham said unto God, Oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. Well, I think it's important to realize that handmaids, even of Jacob, or out of the Jewish nation, like under Esau, did not produce any children outside the Jewish nation in the line going to Jesus. I found this fascinating when I realized it. And we see this in the Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, leading to the tribe of Judah, which is in the lineage of Jesus. Uh, the mother in these three cases uh, was Sarah, Rebecca, and, uh, and, and uh, Jacob's first wife, which was Leah. Uh, I found it interesting that uh, Jacob's first wife was not only uh, Judah, but Levi, which was where all the priests came from. So I can see, even though God allowed uh, people to, uh, to have uh, multiple wives, it seems that uh, at least within the uh, royal line going up through Jesus, it was only the first wife that was allowed to, uh, uh, to be in that line. So I think that's keep that's God keeping to the commandment. He said that uh, each person should have one uh, one wife. Uh, so he may have allowed it. He may have condoned it in some ways, uh, but it wasn't uh, his uh, his original intent. There's one example I can think of though that uh, that the wives weren't even in the Jewish nation, and that was Ruth. Uh, and the reason I bring that up is it's uh, you know, she's the one exception. She wasn't a Jew. And she married Boaz, and they had a son, Obed, that became in the line uh, to David, which is in the line to Jesus. So that was the first Jewish woman to be in the line, <clears throat> a non-Jewish woman, Gentile woman. But she fell into a different rule. Uh, she was, uh, she was a, a widow, and she had not, never had any sons, so she had no offspring. And she was, uh, she was a widow, so she uh, was free to remarry, and actually it was... It was condoned to remarry if you were fairly young when your when your husband would die <clears throat> so that's keeping to the proper law of marriage and uh, that's over in deuteronomy 25 5 through 6 if brethren dwell together and one of them die and have no child the wife of the dead shall not marry without unto a stranger her husband's brother shall go in unto her and take her to him to wife and perform the duty of a husband's brother unto her that was that kinsman redeemer we talked about in Ruth. And it shall be that the firstborn which she beareth shall succeed in the name of his brother, which is dead, that his name be not put out of Israel. So in Ruth's case, it's allowed because it kept to that law. Uh, and so it didn't break any of God's uh, commandments about, uh, uh, about marriage. Paul goes on to mention the same thing in 1 Corinthians 7, 8, and 9. Since I'm on this track, I'll just finish it. I say, therefore, to the unmarried and widows, it is good for them if they abide even as I. But if they cannot contain, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn. And also in 1 Timothy 5.14. I will, therefore, that the younger women marry, bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. So there's a couple of examples where uh, they actually can... Uh, Women that, uh, that where their husbands died young, that they actually promote the idea of uh, remarriage. So I guess I'd point those out. But I found that fascinating on the, on the line going to Jesus, that none of the second uh, wives' children 
uh, were in the line going to Jesus. <clears throat> At least that I can think of. If I run across one, then I'll blew my theory. <laughs> okay, go on to verse 19. And God said, Sarah, thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant, and with his seed after him. So here we go. We even got the name of, uh, of uh, their son. Uh, it's going to be born. <clears throat> it's interesting that the name Isaac, uh, we spell it I-S-A-A-C, but in Hebrew it's spelled Y-I-T-Z-C-H-A-K. I think it might be pronounced similar, but it's Yezek, maybe. Which we change it into the name Isaac. It signifies laughter. <clears throat> So an allusion to uh, Abraham's laughing uh, in Genesis 17, 17 that I read. Uh, By this, Abram did not express his unbelief or a weakness of faith, but his joy at the prospect of fulfillment of so glorious a promise. And to this, our Lord evidently alludes, because uh, uh, Jesus also mentions over in John eight fifty six. 56. Uh, we, I read this once already, but uh, worth repeating. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Okay, moving on to, uh, and talking about covenants, uh, just a refresher here about covenants. The covenant we're talking about here in uh, Genesis, uh, that we read in that verse, I uh, forgot what the covenant was. I look back, uh, I got a little off track. That was 1719. I will oh, the covenant uh, that that uh, you'll have uh, have the seeds uh, seeds uh, that'll cover that'll be, they'd be uh, his seed will be as lo larger than the star stars in the sky. Uh, and I'll read Genesis 2216. It reflects on this also. And he said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, but because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son. That's, confer that's a, uh, when God is going to be confirming uh, this covenant again with Abraham. Uh, he's going to basically put him to a test. We'll get to that one. We'll that's the famous case where he was told to uh, kill Isaac as a sacrifice. And Abraham, because of his faith, knew that uh, that God wouldn't uh, he would either resurrect him or would uh, would somehow stop him from doing it, because he knew that the, of the of the covenant that uh, Abraham would uh, have seed. I'm talking about seed. Uh, let's look at a few verses on that over in Romans 11:26. And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written. They shall come out of Sion, the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Starting with Adam, uh, back in Genesis 3.15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. And it led all the way into Jesus, which is uh, in Acts 1.11. Watch, uh, watch also said ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? The same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. Again, continuing that promise, uh, that the promises will always, that God, once he makes a promise, will always fulfill it. And that, and that gives us the confidence we need to know that Jesus will return. Okay, seven, Genesis 17, 20. <clears throat> And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee, behold, I have blessed thee, and will make him fruitful, and multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget, and I will make him a great nation. So, uh, prior to the, in verse 19, he also commented about, uh, not 19, but uh, verse 18. Let me just refresh our memory on that. And Abraham said unto God, Oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. So here, Abraham was... Uh, pointing out the fact that he had another son. Uh, so I think in Abraham's eyes, he thought Ishmael was going to be the, uh, uh, continue the seed. And that's when I got into that whole idea that it seems that second wives, that the line going to Jesus, 
uh, was only from the first wife, not the second wife. But it also could be from only a Jewish wife. And that's why I wanted to mention that thing about Ruth, because uh, uh, she wasn't a Jew. She was a Moabite. I got that a little bit out of order. I probably should have done that a little differently. But that's basically what I was trying to drive at with that. Uh, so let's go back to... Uh, Uh, where was I? Verse 20. There it is. <clears throat> so now come, God's coming back to, to the idea about Ishmael. So, And as for Ishmael, as I've heard thee, behold, I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget, and I will make him a great nation. Well, interesting uh, enough, and it's funny, I was just watching a news report about uh, this particular nation. Ishmael is the father of the Arab nation. And let's check out a map. Here is a map of Saudi Arabia area. This is where most of the Arabians live. And as we read through this uh, particular passage I'm going to read, if you look around this map, you're going to see all those names. Uh, might be hard to see. Let me bring up, blow it up a little bit and show it one section at a time. I think most of them are in the top half here at first. And they move down into this area down below here. So kind of look around this yellow area as I read these. So talking about the 12 princes uh, and hearing Genesis 16, 12. Uh, 1610. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly that it shall not be numbered for the multitude. And going to Genesis 25, 12 through 16, it's going to mention all of Ishmael's descendants. And they're going to be places you're going to see there. Now, these are the generations of Ishmael, Abraham's son, who Hagar, the Egyptian, Sarah's handmaid, bare unto Abraham. And these are the names of the sons of Ishmael by their names, according to their generations. The firstborn of Ishmael was uh, Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar is right there. And, and Kedar. And Kedar is right... I think it's with a Q here. It's right here. K's and Q's in this language uh, in Hebrew is pretty uh, uh, interchangeable. And I bet Abel... Ada Bell, Ada Bell is up here, and uh, Mibsam, Mibsam is right, uh, it's probably this one here. And Mishma, Mishma is right there, and Duma, <coughs> Duma is right there, and Massa, Massa is right there. Hadar, Hadar is right there, uh, and Tima, Tima is right there, uh, Jetyor, Jetyor, that's probably that Jetyor, J's and Y's sometimes are interchanged, and then Nepesh, Nepesh, I don't see Napesh. Oh, there it is, Napesh. And Kidima. Kidima. It might be spelled different. Might be Nebat. Did I already say Nibabat? Oh, I said Nibabat already. Anyways, uh, that's basically, they're all in this basic area. I don't see that last one. It's probably here someplace. I'm just not seeing it. So this yellow area, the territory and the distribution of the Ishmaelites tribes. <laughs> so moving on here. 
These are the sons of Ishmael, and these are their names by their towns and by their castles, 12 princes according to their nations. So there was 12 I mentioned. And so they basically started out here and they spread out pretty much down into the Sinai. Uh, Ishmael settled in Shur, which is Midian. Midian is where the famous uh, shrine is to the uh, right here. Medina uh, is a, where the famous uh, uh, Muslim uh, holy place is. And the wilderness of Paran, this, is the, this area is the wilderness of Paran. We'll get into that later in Genesis. And Mount Sinai, uh, I have, and I believe this one too, I believe the real Mount Sinai is, uh, is also in Saudi Arabia. It's down in this general area. Oh, right here, there it is. And some of the verses we're gonna mention here real quick uh, that also talk about, uh, we see here in uh, Mount Sinai was in Shur, that's mentioned over in Numbers 1134 and Exodus 1522. Uh, and Hagar, Ishmael and Sinai were all in Arabia. Uh, which uh, I mentioned it over in Galatians 4.25. I won't go to those verses. And Arabia equals Kidar, uh, uh, Quidar. And that's mentioned also in Ezekiel 27.21, Isaiah 21.13 through 16. So we know these places really existed. And so that basically the Arab nations, uh, which are now mostly Saudi Arabia, is, uh, is all Arab. They spread out. Uh, there's Arabs in a lot of different countries. But they're mostly considered to be Saudi Arabia. So history lesson for today is over. <laughs> but I think that it's so cool uh, for me when I can when I can see that uh, the Bible uh, is such a great historical document also. It's accurate, 100% accurate. To me, that's a very, uh, that builds a lot of confidence in what, uh, that, they, that the scribes who transcribed the, uh, the Bible were very diligent in their work. Uh, making sure the Word of God maintained its uh, accuracy all the way since uh, 2000 BC when Moses was writing some of this stuff. So finishing up here, that was the 12 uh, princes. Let's go back to Genesis 17, 21. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac, which Sarah shall bear unto thee at this set time in the next year. So now they even have a year. So a year from now, he's going to come back and Sarah's going to get pregnant. And that's when he's going to do it. It seems interesting that he wanted to make sure it's done in a very certain time. I, and I, and I, it's something I have to keep remembering myself too, that God has knows the perfect time for everything. And so that uh, not to be impatient and to, and to wait on the Lord. It's good to see other people, too, in biblical history had the same problem I do. Abraham, I can see, was like me. Well, Lord, you know, I don't have any sons yet. You know, uh, the star in the sky thing doesn't seem to be working out too good. <laughs> I, I, can see, I can see the conversation between him and God at some point. So talking about Isaac some more. Uh, <clears throat> Over in Genesis, uh, uh, this is when he actually gets born. In Genesis 26, it talks about Isaac, two through five. And I thought I'd give it a little preview because I, I, uh, Isaac almost does the same thing that, uh, that uh, Abraham did. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt, dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee, and will bless thee. For unto thee and unto thy seed I will give all these countries, and I will perform the oath which I swear unto your father Abraham. And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven and will give unto thy seed all the countries and in the seed they shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. That's where we get the idea. Uh, and, and this is repeated so many times in the Bible. That it's, that it's very, very true that, uh, uh, that for the, all the countries that bless Israel, their countries prosper. And for so many years, uh, America has been on the forefront of being friends with Israel and uh, supporting the Jewish nation. And I can see that time is waning. Uh, the the, the uh, governments of uh, uh, the government now currently is uh, is not being as strongly pro-Israel as they should be. I think, 
And uh, I'm afraid that might influence how God uh, is going to treat us in the future. So as a country, not necessarily as a person, but as a country. So pray for our country, pray for our leaders that, uh, that they uh, will start to look to the Lord for guidance. That's my prayer every morning or every day. Uh, okay, verse 5. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments and my statutes and my laws. And so we'll get to that when we get to chapter 26. But I just thought I'd point that out that Isaac was given the exact same commandment. And uh, there's that famous map I showed you. That's the promised land. That's what God promises and within that red boundary which still has not happened to this day. Poor little old Israel right here in the middle. And even within Israel, you see that brown area is the only thing that Israel has control of. The white area, uh, that's the famous, uh, we call it uh, Judea and Samaria. They call it the West Bank. Uh, so when they keep describing the West Bank, they're talking about the wrong West Bank. It should be talking about this West Bank over here <laughs> of the uh, Euphrates River. But in the future, that'll happen. But right now, that's only, uh, that little brown area is the only area they have control of. So at a set time, uh, in Genesis 18, 14, is anything too hard for the Lord? At, at the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. That's a definite guarantee. So continuing on into verse 22. Almost finished. I'm just gonna. The rest of it, I'm just gonna read through it. There's something we already talked about yesterday, and here uh, Abraham is gonna follow through on that commandment. And he left off talking with him, and God went up from Abraham. Now I don't think this was an appearance. I think this was a voice or uh, a vision of some sort, because it didn't say that God. Uh, so I don't consider this to be an epiphany like some of the other ones. But he's going. But the next one is actually going to be an epiphany, where God Himself is going to be. Uh, he's going to be able to see Him bodily. And God went up from Abraham, and Abraham took Ishmael his son, and all that were born in his house, and all that were brought from it with his money, every male among the men of the Abraham's house, and circumcised the flesh of their foreskin in the selfsame day, as God had said unto them. And Abraham was 90 years old and nine when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. I don't think I'd want to go through that as an adult. <laughs> I hear it's very, very painful. It takes about three days for it to heal enough before you're not sore. We're going to get to a story about that uh, later on when, uh, when uh, some of uh, Jacob's son take advantage of that situation. And uh, well, we'll get into that when we, when we get to it. And Ishmael, his son, was 13 years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. And the selfsame day was Abraham circumcised and Ishmael, his son, and all the men of his house, born in the house and brought with money of the stranger, were circumcised with him. And I'm pretty sure they didn't have a whole lot of anesthesia back then. So it's probably just a real quick thing. I don't know the process. I know I know what the, I know what it entails, but I don't know. I just can imagine it's painful because that's a very sensitive area. Okay, so that's it for chapter twenty-seven, uh, chapter seventeen, and we will end with a prayer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, so much uh, for all that you do, and thank you that uh, uh, we get to all this great uh, insight into your Word. Thank you for the, your help understanding what's happening, and we continue to try to use this in our daily lives to uh, uh, better enhance our relationship with you, Lord. And uh, thank you, Lord, so much. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, so I'll, I'll talk again uh, uh, on Monday, and we'll get into chapter 18. And kind of looking forward to Sunday, so don't miss it. That's going to be kind of cool. Uh, I guess it's going to be shifting gears a little bit. I think everybody will like it.